Much of that which is confession is nothing more than trying to use the word of God as the means of finding license to continue without intermediate judgment. And such is not what the Word teaches at all. He said we're to examine ourselves, we're to judge ourselves, and we are to forsake everything God shows us to be sin. And here in the ninth verse of this first chapter, we are told that we are to confess it as sin. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But confession without true dealing with it, without true repentance, without true forsaking, is just an exercise in hypocrisy, futility. I remember years ago, I went to one of my teachers here in the city when I was in a certain school. I told him about a problem I was having. And it was breaking my heart because I knew it was grieving God. I had learned that out at Minnetonka there were some people there that were having a conference called, at that time it seems to me, Keswick. And there were men, I think, in one of those years, one of the teachers, preachers, expounding victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, was Cameron Townsend, who later founded Summer Institute of Linguistics. And I went to this dear man and said, Doctor, and he said, Now listen, you don't want to go out there and get that heresy about victory. Nobody's perfect. You'll just grow out of a lot of these problems as the years go by. Just be sure that whenever you fail, you ask God to forgive you. The only hope he had for victory was that I'd get older sometime. And when I was looking and yearning and longing for a way of escape, he told me there wasn't any. Just to, just to be sure to confess it. But I knew what he meant by confess it. What he meant was just say, oh Lord, I failed again, please forgive. And then I found out years later that's not what confess means. I discovered from the Word what it means. You know what it is? It means to call it by name. That's what confession is. To call it by name. I think I told you last summer, but I repeat it for those who aren't here, an experience I had years ago, one of our fine Christian colleges. I was privileged to be the speaker for the meetings, evangelistic meetings at the college. And God moved. There were some nights when we had people on the platform lined up to tell what God had done in their life till 12 and 1 and 2 in the morning. This particular night, a group of people had come to the front and we prayed with them and some of them had gone to share with the others what God had done in their life and to confess to their fellow students that which they had done and ask the forgiveness of the student body. There was one woman, young woman, that came way over at the end. When others were gone, she was there, and I went over. And I said, what are you here for? And she said, well, I wanted to talk to you alone 
because I, I got a problem. And she told how the previous summer she'd worked at a certain place and that something had happened. And she said, I've confessed it many, many times, but I don't have peace about it. Well, I said, why not? If you've done it many times, let's once more. And I wanted to find out where she was. And we knelt to pray and and she started to lecture God. And after a few minutes of that, I touched her shoulder, pointed my finger and said, you just continue. I'm going to go with some important things I need to say. What do you mean? I said, well, I, I, well, I'm praying. No, I said, you're not. You're lecturing God. You're not praying. And she said, well, well, what do you mean? I said, you're here for one purpose and one only to deal with this and you've gone all around it but you haven't done what you knelt to do which is to confess your sin. She said, what is it? I said, don't you really know? She said, no. I said, you have to call it by name and tell God exactly what you did. Oh, she said, I couldn't do that. I said, where do you think he was when that happened? Asleep? Didn't see it? Didn't know about it? You think you're going to surprise him? You think you're going to, you're going to embarrass him? What? She said, but do I have to? I said, well, that's what the word means. Call it by name. And so we knelt and she did. And she called it by name. And the fountains of deep broke up in her heart. And then she really broke before the Lord. And after all this weeks and months of going through the motions again and again and again with nothing happening, when she realized that what she'd done, that she had turned aside from walking in the light to walk in darkness, God met her. And she knew peace and joy, forgiveness and restoration of blessing in her life. Hear it again. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all unrighteousness. First evidence. How do you walk? Walk in the light. Father in heaven, we ask thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that thou wilt apply the word to each heart and life and let it accomplish its loving purpose and bring glory and honor and praise to the name of thy dear Son, in whose name and for whose sake we ask it. Amen.